This is News 3 Now at 6. Thanks for joining us. Charlotte is off tonight. With about a month to go until the start of the school year, teachers unions from big districts across the state are again asking for the governor to call an all virtual start to the school year. Amy Reed, live downtown to show how they try to get his attention today. Amy. Hours ago, a caravan of teachers from unions from across the state, Racine, Kenosha, Milwaukee, and Madison, drove by the Capitol trying to send a message for their safety and the safety of everyone who goes to or interacts with the school. They want a virtual start to the school year. Instead of the classrooms teachers normally decorate at the start of the year, this group geared up cars and painted signs. Gravestones for educators or the parent of a kindergartner who contracted COVID are there to send a message to the state government. These teachers want a virtual start to the school year. We really want to elevate the fact that um, A, it is unsafe. We, our schools are not fully funded in a way that can address all of the safety concerns that we have. The teachers drove all over the state, ending up in Madison to deliver their thoughts to the Department of Public Instruction, DHS, and the state capitol for the governor. We want to keep our students alive, bottom line. Um, we want to keep our students' families alive. We want to keep our educators alive, and we want to keep our educators' families alive. Their words echo ones they've said before, but this time they told us more teachers from districts that have opted for in-person this fall have joined in. State Senator Steve Noss, a Republican from Whitewater, sent a release to us today claiming he's heard from sources that Governor Tony Evers was going to use his latest public health emergency to close down schools. Last week, Evers praised local districts for deciding what works best for them. But here, teachers worry that won't work as long as the virus is still out of control. We have to come together as a community to really map out what, what the struggles are going to be with this and come together to figure out what some reasonable solutions are. Today, the Senate Majority Leader said that he and other Republicans think kids should be back in school this fall. He also said Republican lawmakers are prepared to come into session later this week or next week to try and block this latest public health emergency declaration. Amy Reid, live at the state capitol. Amy, thank you. The number of new cases today in Wisconsin dropped hundreds from yesterday's almost 900 new cases. Health officials confirmed fewer than 600 new positive tests. In total, more than 55,000 cases have been confirmed statewide. DHS officials say about 10,000, that's about 18% of those cases, remain active. We are nearing a total of 1,000 deaths. 5.6% of tests in the past day came back positive, a drop of four points since yesterday. The amount of testing has also declined. Senate Majority Leader Fitzgerald says he wants the legislature to reconvene this week or next to strike down Governor Evers' mask mandate. That order, designed to slow the spread of COVID-19, took effect Saturday. Fitzgerald said in a radio interview this morning that he was talking with Republican Assembly Speaker Robin Voss about a plan. Now, Speaker Voss opposes the mandate, but has not said whether the Assembly would come in to vote it down, as Senator Fitzgerald said the Senate wants to do. Let's check your first born forecast. Here's meteorologist Dana Fulton. Dana? Right now, we still have some clouds hanging out, but temperatures are in a really comfortable spot this afternoon. We saw highs uh, barely getting close to 70 degrees. Here's a live look with our Edgewater sky cam. Again, a cloudy sky this evening. We're at about 65 currently in Madison with a little bit of a breeze coming from the north northeast about 12 miles per hour. Those clouds not bringing any rain to the area. Some isolated showers towards Milwaukee. Just a few little light sprinkles. Now temperatures overnight will be dropping close to 50 degrees and as we look ahead to tomorrow highs yet again will be below average in the low 70s. We'll stay comfortable and sunny for Wednesday but by the end of the week and the weekend we'll be back in the 80s. So a little bit above average a little summery uh, heading into to next week. That's going to come along with a few rain chances, but we'll take a look at your full forecast in just a few minutes, Eric. Dana, thank you. There is an effort to help UW-Madison students vote early at four on-campus locations ahead of the primary on August 11th. In-person absentee voting will happen in large tents on Library Mall, Engineering Mall, Dejo Residence Hall, and the Cole Center. It started today. It's available still through tomorrow through Thursday from noon until 4 p.m., and the outdoor stations allow for safety measures like physical distancing and poll workers we spoke to today say it's all about convenience. Having this wide number of times we can vote will increase the participation uh, of, of, for, in voting in this country uh, because so many people have difficulty getting out on uh, or getting to go and vote on, a, on election day. 
Now there are also drive up in person absentee voting locations outside the city clerk's office and at a number of parks and libraries. You can find those locations at cityofmadison.com slash clerk. The head of the Wisconsin Elections Commission urging voters not to wait to return those absentee ballots given the high demand and possible mailing delays. So far only about 40% of ballots that were sent out have been completed and received. Voters still have until Thursday to request an absentee ballot. The deadline to return them is 8 p.m. on election night. And a reminder, there are a number of ballot drop boxes at libraries across Madison if you're concerned about your ballot arriving on time. That includes Penny, Alicia Ashman, Sequoia, Central, and Hawthorne Libraries. A CDC report released Friday finds there was no clear increase in COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, or deaths after Wisconsin's April 7th election. Looking at the two weeks after the election, during the incubation period when COVID-19 symptoms can develop, the CDC says there were 572 new cases reported in Milwaukee. Of that number, 55% of patients did not report whether or not they voted. 35 38% did not vote, 6.5% of patients reported voting. Of those, 37 people, 62% said they used a mail-in absentee ballot or curbside voting. The CDC says the data shows their guidelines are working to lower COVID-19 transmission risk during elections. Those guidelines include ensuring various voting options, encouraging physical distancing, and making sure polling stations are cleaned and disinfected. Governor Tony Evers endorsing Joe Biden for president. It comes after the governor had declined to endorse anyone in the primary in just two weeks before the start of the Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee. Biden has promised to attend the event that's been scaled back due to the pandemic to accept the nomination in person. The governor promises he'll do everything he can to get Biden elected. Health officials are finding evidence that COVID-19 can have lasting effects up to months after symptoms show. And researchers around the world found that more than 50% of patients can experience some symptoms for months after diagnosis, in some cases even long-lasting effects on the lungs and heart. UW Health Chief Quality Officer Dr. Jeff Potoff says it could take years to learn the full effects of what COVID-19 will do to a person's body. We know that the damage is lingering. Uh, it's not fixing itself right away. We do not yet know if that damage will ever fix itself uh, or if it's just going to take people, you know, months and months, years to recover from, from this, at least that, that segment. Uh, we just don't know yet. And for these reasons, Potoff says it remains critical that people do their best to avoid contracting the virus by distancing and wearing their masks. New information tonight, Madison police have confirmed the man in custody for the fatal stabbing of a 13-year-old girl is her father. 44-year-old Travis Christensen has been booked into the Dane County Jail on tentative charges of first-degree homicide and first-degree attempted homicide. The medical examiner identified the victim as Adriana Christensen. She was killed in her home on Madison's west side Thursday night. Another person was injured. The survivor victim who has not been identified has been released from the hospital. A Wisconsin Marine is among those missing and presumed dead after their landing craft sank during a training exercise last week. 19-year-old Private First Class Evan Bath of Oak Creek is among the eight troops still unaccounted for after the incident off the coast of Southern California. The 26-ton amphibious assault vehicle took on water and quickly sank in hundreds of feet of water, making it difficult to reach. Eight Marines were rescued, but one later died. Two are in critical condition. Developing tonight a Bicyclist at Sun Prairie taken to the hospital for emergency surgery after being hit by a car. Police say the woman was in the crosswalk at on McCoy Road near Taco Bell. This was just before 11 a.m. today. The driver reportedly is cooperating with police. No arrests or citations have been issued. Madison fire crews are investigating the cause of a kitchen fire. This was an apartment building on Magnolia Lane. That's on Madison's south side. Multiple 911 callers reported seeing smoke coming from the building around 1.30 this afternoon. Officials say it was a small kitchen fire and there were no injuries. Coming up next at 6, the dairy industry trying to keep increasing milk sales during the pandemic going for the long term, hoping a previous ad campaign can make it happen. That story next. Stay with us. What do you think of when you hear custom built in the USA? Superior quality, skilled craftsmanship, built to last, and renewal by Anderson. Our windows are custom built in the USA. That's something each and every one of us is proud of. We're proud of what we do, and we're proud of where we do it. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Papa Murphy's, we need seriously, chop seriously, and shred seriously. Because we're serious about Tuesdays, even if you're not. Every Tuesday, get a large pizza for just $10. Papa Murphy's, change the way you pizza. 
Pull into your driveway in style. Relax by the pool in luxury and give your front porch the facelift it needs with TSR Concrete Coatings, Wisconsin's premier concrete coatings contractor. Get beautiful concrete coatings installed in as little as one day. Customizable and easy to clean. See the before and now the after. Our coatings are four times stronger than regular epoxy. They won't chip, crack, or peel. They're impact resistant and UV stable. Now check out these savings. Save 15% on your concrete coating project. Ask about 12 months, same as cash. TSR Nation is growing by the day with satisfied customers throughout Wisconsin, and we want you to be a part of it. As a special bonus, call during this program and receive a free TSR swag pack with your concrete coating project. Call 1-800-886-8411. That's 1-800-886-8411. Tuesday morning, you might actually need a jacket as you head out the door. We'll have details on a chilly morning in your first one forecast. And we'll tell you how UW-Madison is getting involved in looking for a vaccine for COVID-19. We'll see you tomorrow from 4.30 to 7. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. The Madison Fire Department's Lake Rescue Team saved a stranded swimmer early yesterday morning after a boat capsized and sank near the Tenney Park Lock and Dam. Fire officials say two people were thrown from the boat just before 1 a.m. One boater was able to swim to shore and call 911, but the other was stuck in the water. Rescue crews were able to find the stranded boater thanks to a flashlight that he managed to hold on to. Both boaters were okay, but the boat could not be found. New at six, six years after the popular Got Milk tagline was retired, the ads are making a comeback. The dairy industry reviving the campaign, hoping to prolong the U.S. sales and boost milk that's gotten during the pandemic. From January through mid-July, U.S. milk retail sales were up 8.3% to $6.4 billion. According to Nielsen, during the same time frame last year, milk sales were down 2.3%. Dairy experts say the increased milk consumption during the pandemic is because kids are eating lunch at home, adults have more time for breakfast, and cooking with milk. U.S. Olympic swimmer Katie Ledecky tweeted her own Got Milk promotion, swimming the length of a pool while balancing a cup of chocolate milk on her head. The Got Milk Challenge on TikTok. She asked others what they can do without spilling a drop of milk. Still ahead at six months after vandalism in downtown Madison, a jewelry store opens its doors again. And we'll hear from the owner about what it took to get things up and running once again. Stay with us and much cooler outside today. Won't last long. Dana tells us when to expect a bit of a warm up. That's next in your first worn forecast. the responsible one so much like me always taking care of everyone else but this this wasn't your responsibility I already took care of the arrangements the Ryan's made it so easy I didn't want you to worry about a thing it's my last gift to you my lovely daughter let us help you create your family's recipe for health. SSM Health and News 3 Now are making it easy by putting all the ingredients right at your fingertips. With topics like healthy habits, nutrition, and mental well-being, there's something for everyone. Visit Channel 3000's Time for Kids page for advice from SSM Health experts. And catch fresh and informative reports on News 3 Now. Take time for kids with SSM Health and News 3 Now. Hey, Dutch boy, show me mocha red. Okay. Does it have a smooth, durable finish? Yes, and it's 50% more stain resistant. You still talking to Dutch boy? Dutch boy, show me sleepy purple. Okay. Oh, would you look at that. That's better. He'll still help us paint, right? With Dutch Boy's quality paint and Menards expert service, you can twist off to something great. Right now at Menards, get 11% off everything, including Dutch Boy paint. Dear Summer, how do I make the most of you? Do I kick back and relax? Or climb new mountains? I could go and get dirty. Or switch into new lanes. One thing's for sure, it's gonna be great. Can't wait, Toyota. Right now, you can get 1.9% financing for 60 months on a new 2020 RAV4 or RAV4 Hybrid. Toyota. An 
I brought you a gift so you can fight properly. Red Bull. Oh! How nice. Of you. But also... Rather. Stupid. Hmm. Mine. Mine. No, mine. No, mine. 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 Uh-uh. Mine. Oh. Red Bull gives you wings. Two months after downtown protests began, we are hearing from interim Madison Police Chief Vic Wall on what a critical test it's been for him. I feel like it's, uh, you know, sort of a, a, a decade's worth of, of experience crammed into 10 months so far. When he took over last year, when Chief Mike Koval abruptly resigned, and Wall said it was his job to listen to everybody in the community and to hear all positions, even the ones he does not agree with. People have certainly had a lot to say about how Madison police handled the unrest. It's important that people just recognize that when we're faced with uh, unprecedented levels of violence and property damage, we have an obligation to take some action and we are constrained by the tools available to us. The use of tear gas has brought a lot of criticism, and those police tactics are under independent review by the University of Pennsylvania Law School. Chief Wall says he has no doubt the review will find he and the department could have done things differently. The Police and Fire Commission is currently in the process of searching for the next chief of police. New at 6, graffiti spray-painted outside of the Wisconsin Veterans Museum on the Capitol Square will be removed starting this week. According to the State Department of Veterans Affairs, the building's owner had notified the state that repair work was set to begin to a Wednesday after numerous veterans groups had called for the damage to be repaired. The building owner took time to consult with an insurance company and determine the best way to clean that sensitive stone. For the first time in months, Goodman's Jewelers is back open again. It was the first business to be vandalized on State Street just after peaceful protests had ended. Jamie Perez joins us there now to show us what the past few months has brought for them. Jamie? All right, so as you can see, the outside here is still boarded up, and you're about to see that the inside still needs some work as well, but the owner said that now at the start of the new month is a good time to reopen. Put it down. Okay, I'll put it down. Put it down sure. now. Why not? I'll put it down right now. You're stealing from me. I did not. For 37 years, Goodman's Jewelers has been John Hayes' second home. So when he walked in and saw that it had been destroyed. Where the tops were completely broken, some of the fronts were broken. He knew there was going to be a long road ahead. It didn't really get that much, but the damage that they did was was severe. $60,000 in damage and $25,000 in stolen merchandise. So for the past three months, he and other staff members have been working on repairs, making the inside a new experience to come back to. All the damage has been repaired. Uh, Blaine and Tina from Donson Furniture refinished our cases for us. Making Hayes feel like he can get somewhat back to normal. It's really a good feeling to actually see merchandise in our cases. For him, this is more than just replacing things that were damaged or stolen. This is what I do. It's my life. I've been here for 37 years. I worked for Bob and Irwin before I bought the store. So this is, you know, this is home. It's my second home. Even though some of the shelves still sit empty and some final work still needs to be done, Hayes says being back home makes him feel a sense of... Relief would be the word to uh, save for... Uh, being able to get back to feeling normal again. Probably be a few more months until he has full inventory again, but for now, he's just happy to be back on State Street and back open. Uh, great to see them back open. Jamie Perez live on State Street. Jamie, thank you. Let's go to Dana. She's got our chilly weather out there today. It was a little cool. I took the kids to the pool today. It was, uh, I think, 59 degrees when they hit the water. Little cool for that pool weather. Just a little chilly outside, especially early in the morning. It's been cool. Radar's nice and quiet right now. We do have some showers and thunderstorms well to the southeast for parts of Indiana and Ohio. And if you go even further southeast than that, we're keeping a close eye still on Tropical Storm East IES continuing to move northwest. The center of the storm fairly close to Charleston, Myrtle Beach. It's likely going to make landfall overnight or early, early Tuesday morning uh, just outside of Myrtle Beach or perhaps near Wilmington, North Carolina as it continues to move north. All of that rain Rain and wind will impact the outer banks of North Carolina. For us, though, it was really pleasant outside today. A little cloudy, but kind of a nice day to give the AC a break and maybe open up the windows a little bit. Overnight temperatures will drop to the low 50s again. Areas north of Dane County could be seeing overnight lows in the mid to upper 40s. Mostly sunny skies expected for tomorrow and then for the weekend we're back to the 80s. High temperatures will be in the middle 80s uh, for Saturday and Sunday and into next week. So overnight the clouds will clear out. We'll start the day off in a bit
bit of a chilly spot again north of Dane County. We could see those temperatures dropping quite a bit. Uh, heading into Tuesday afternoon, temperatures will be in the low 70s yet again for afternoon highs. Mostly sunny for Wednesday and afternoon highs Wednesday afternoon. We'll creep up a few more degrees likely in the mid 70s. So just a little bit closer to average, but still not quite there. Our warming trend really picks up towards the weekend, looking six to 10 days out. So that puts us closer to the middle of August already, August 9th through the 13th very likely that we're going to see temperatures above average, so we won't be enjoying those overnight lows and, and the chilly spots anymore. But we'll cool back down here in just a few months, I'm sure. It'll be a little more chilly outside. Now, tomorrow, high temperatures will be in the low 70s, mostly sunny and pleasant at 72 in Madison, so uh, similar to today with temperatures, but we'll get a little more sunshine, of course, throughout the day. Mostly sunny for Tuesday and Wednesday, again, mid-70s on Wednesday, and the upper 70s on Thursday with partly sunny skies, a slight chance for showers to develop late Thursday Friday and Saturday. Our moisture is just going to increase a little bit. We'll get a little more humid outside. But Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're back in the 80s. A better chance for showers and thunderstorms expected on Sunday. And for the following week, it does seem likely that the temperatures will stay above average and we'll continue to see highs in the middle 80s and overnight lows in the mid to low 60s. So again, for the next few days, at least enjoy the break. Enjoy the little taste of fall before we really start to see summer settle right back on in. That's a quick look at your forecast. And coming up in sports, the buzzword at training camp, accountability. While the Packers know it's on them to stay healthy outside of Lambeau Field. That's next on News 3 Now. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. If someone came to you and asked, what are you invested in? Would your answer be about mutual funds and money markets? Or would it be mutual relationships and farmers markets? Maybe both. At Thrivent, we believe money is a tool, not a goal. And with the right guidance, it can afford you a life rich in meaning and gratitude. By gaining financial clarity today, you can thrive with purpose tomorrow. To learn more, text THRIVE to 484848 or visit Thrivent.com. Great decision on your new windows. Buy one, get one won't last long. Have you always been so passionate about windows? Foco's buy one, get one free windows is totally rad. Foco's energy efficient windows are a must in every home. So hurry. You could say that. Buy one window, get one free, and get no interest for one year. Buy one, get one free, and soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feltco. us apart. That's why U.S. Cellular is building powerful 5G coverage that works inside and out. And now, get $700 off the latest phones. U.S. Cellular. Choose fair. America, we want to help get you back to it. And here's how, with the Ford Promise. Visit your Ford dealer. Finance a new, certified, pre-owned, or used vehicle through Ford Credit. And if you lose your job, you can return it for up to one year from the day you bought it. You can also get 0% APR financing for 72 months across the Ford lineup. Let us help get you back to it with the Ford Promise. This year, school is going to be full of changes. What will school be like, and how can we make sure our kids are safe? We're getting the answers you need to help you prepare. So keep an eye on News 3 Now this morning and get ready to go back to school. Training camp is underway in Green Bay and there are a couple things running through the minds of the Packers. Number one, excitement to be back. And number two, the protocols to stay healthy during camp. 
Now there are reminders all around the facility for it, and head coach Matt LaFleur can preach it, but when it comes down to it outside the walls of Lambeau Field, it's on the players, which is why the word of 2020 in Titletown, accountability. A lot of you know, accountability on the players about what you're doing uh, outside the facility. You know, and I think that's where the responsibility lies. If we want to continue to play, uh, if you, you want to, you want to have a chance to, to have everybody available and and have a chance to compete for a Super Bowl, Super Bowl, then, you know, we gonna have to, to live through those guidelines or just you know staying in the house and quarantining and, and handling our business the right way. Watch this season rolls on in college football, and there's an award for every position. Wisconsin long snapper Adam Bay has been named to the Patrick Manley Long Snapper Award, which is given to the top senior long snapper in the FBS. Bay has never missed a game since he stepped on campus. Like last year, Mike Budenholzer has been named the NBCA Head Coach of the Year in the NBA, becoming the only coach to win the award twice. That's the good news for the Bucks today. The bad news, they're coming off a loss to the Rockets last night in a game where they kind of gave it away. The Bucks turned the ball over 22 times and blew a six-point lead in the final three minutes. They'll take the L, but they're going to learn from it. You know, at the end of the day, that's really what killed us was, you know, uh, turnovers, lack of execution down the stretch. So um, I actually think that's a good thing for us to learn from, and we'll get better. Usually, maybe up six. Two minutes to go, we usually close the game up, but uh, we didn't do it today, so we got to learn from it. This is a great game to learn from and got to keep moving. CBS Sports released their updated top 25 and one preseason men's basketball poll. And the Big Ten is well represented in the top 10. Iowa's the highest ranked team in the conference at number five. Illinois comes in at six and Wisconsin sits 10th. Those three along with Michigan State are expected to not only battle it out for a Big Ten title, but make deep runs in the NCAA tournament. And Brewers right-handed pitcher Shelby Miller has opted out of the season. He was at Milwaukee's alternative training site in Appleton, waiting to be called up. Miller joins Lorenzo Cain on the Brewers' opt-out list. Uh, and tonight, opening day, finally. We're supposed to do it Starting to get Friday, a little worried about this, though, with all these uh, cancellations and all these guys opting well, out. Let's just play as many games yeah, as we can. We'll take it. <laughs> yeah. It's fun to watch it, even if it doesn't last forever. All right, let's go to Dana. Final check. A little cool outside for tomorrow and for Wednesday. High temperatures will be in the mid to low 70s with mostly sunny skies. Partly sunny for Thursday and Friday. Temps steadily creep back to the 80s. So we get summer back for the weekend, but that's going to come along with some shower chances. A slight chance for showers and thunderstorms late Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Sunday, there's going to be a better chance for showers and thunderstorms. Looking ahead to next week, afternoon high temperatures will be in the mid to low 80s. So again, feels like summer. That's going to stick around for a little bit. Overnight lows will be back in the 60s for next week. All right, Dana, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us at 6. We'll be back tonight for News 3 Now at 10. Have a good evening.